Christmas is around the corner and a lot of us still have to get our Christmas gift shopping done. So I thought I'd help if you have a videographer or photographer friend that you're not sure what to get them. Well, I have plenty of ideas. Being a videographer myself, a lot of these are actually things that I want. Hint, hint, if you're my family. Otherwise, these are some things that I would recommend or wish that I had sooner. So without further ado, let's just get started. I have my little listicle here on my laptop and let's actually begin with storage. Now, when I mean storage, I'm talking about hard drives, uh, solid state drives, SD cards, things like that. So any sort of method in which we store our footage and or photos that we take. So first things first, let's talk about SSDs. SSDs stands for solid state drives. And these are essentially uh, storage units that are much faster when it comes to reading and writing. So a lot of videographers use this so that they can actually edit active projects without having that stored onto their computer locally. The benefit of an SSD is that you have the active project on you and you can pretty much take this wherever you're going. So if you go traveling, you can go on a different computer and still use all the project files that you have. And of course, it's useful if you're going to be uh, transferring files between different computers for your clients or other work. And this is in contrast to HDDs, which we'll get to shortly. So the SSD that I recommend for pretty much most people is the SanDisk 2 terabyte. I say two terabytes because that pretty much allows for a ton of footage. You can even have multiple projects on here. But if you shoot something like 4K Apple ProRes, this would be a few hours for one single project, which is enough for most people. This is mostly for videographers, as I mentioned, but of course you can get this to a photographer friend because it is useful for transferring files quickly between devices. All right, now onto the subject of HDDs or hard disk drives. So hard disk drives, are pretty much the same thing. They're a storage unit for files. However, they read and write significantly slower than SSDs. So you might be thinking, what's the point of even owning them then? Well, this is more for not working off of, but rather for just long-term storage that you have access to these files. So as a videographer, we have done a lot of previous clients works. When we're done with the project, everything's been approved and we've sent off the final deliverable to them. We like to delete the files from our computer and then move them to a hard disk drive. So now if they ever do need work on it or if they hire us again, we have some of the old footage that we can still use on the next project, but they're just not stored on our computer taking up space and slowing down our workflow. So for this, we actually recommend the uh, WD 14 terabyte Elements desktop external hard drive. Gosh, that was a mouthful. But essentially this is 15 terabytes of storage. So if you're unfamiliar with storage, uh, two terabytes was a lot, but this is 15, so almost eight times that. So this should last you a very long time. And ideally, you want to have two uh, backups of each file. So I do have some normal hard drives, like these like Lacy's lying around, which I have right here. So these Lacy's I use, but this is like a five terabyte for like, I don't know, 150 bucks. That 15 terabyte is actually about $250. And that will last you a very, very long time. All right, and finally on the topic of storage, let's talk SD cards. Pretty much every DSLR and mirrorless camera runs off of some type of SD card, whether it be micro SD or you know, regular size SD cards. So what I would recommend is getting them an SD card that matches their camera because not all SD cards are created equal. So this may take a little bit of research or if you are a photographer, videographer, all you really need to know is to look up the model of the camera that you're gonna get the SD card for and just find out which ones are compatible because you have two types. One is UHS-1, which is the first gen, and we have UHS-2, which is a significantly faster uh, version of the first generation. For videographers, um, you typically wanna make sure you're at least uh, of the code reading of V30. It should say on the SD card. However, if you're shooting uh, 4K and especially around 60 FPS, I'll be more comfortable uh, getting them a V60 card that's pretty much what I shoot on. And anything above that, you're gonna need V90s, but that's when you start heading into really expensive territory when it comes to SD cards. However, for V60, I have found a really good deal and it's on Amazon. It's the Lexar Professional uh, Ultra SD card UHS-2 and it comes in a two pack. And the two pack, the highest uh, storage limit you have is 256 gigabytes. So essentially you have a total of 512 gigabytes in two SD cards, which is pretty much half a terabyte, which is amazing. And that'll do for most people, once again, especially if you're shooting 4K, it is gonna run out a little bit quicker, but that's even in 4K 60, that's like a, an hour or two of footage, which is 
more than enough for most shooters. Okay, and now we're done with storage. Let's talk about another really good idea for gifts, which is camera bags. So everyone knows as you start accumulating gear and you start traveling with it, it's getting tough to find the right bag for the right job. So I got three options for you here. You got a large one, which will carry a bunch of gear, but of course will be heavy, but there's some uh, tools on there to help support like the waist belt and the shoulder uh, strap that you can kind of tie around the person's chest to help support uh, the weight of the bag. So for the large bag, I would recommend the Low Pro Pro Tactic 450AW2. And the great thing about this bag is that it actually has a 15 inch slot for your laptop or tablet if that's something that you uh, value. And this thing is really huge. Another recommendation is actually the Peter McKinnon one. I, the name escapes me, but I'll link it and show it right here on the screen so you can check it out. Those are really good bags. However, if you're looking for a more everyday medium sized bag that you can carry on, I recommend this one that I have actually. It's a decent size. It can hold a decent amount of gear. It actually has a little slot on top that you can add some extra goodies or you can even put clothes there, which I have done before. So I can take some of my camera gear and take some clothes and just put it all in one bag. However, it is very limited. Like I said, it's not large, so it is more of a medium size. You also have a strap on the side so you can actually uh, put your tripod in there and then secure it uh, tightly to the bag. And of course, it actually does have a sleeve for my laptop, which I have traveled with. It's a bit smaller than the 15 inch, but it fits this one really nicely. So if you don't have a very large uh, laptop, it should be no problem whatsoever. And finally, when we're talking about bags, the smallest one you can possibly take is a sling. A sling is almost like a fanny pack for cameras. It allows for very easy access to your cameras and accessories. However, because it is so small, you can't carry too much gear. So just make sure to take the essentials or your favorite lens, your favorite body, maybe a few SD cards, a uh, lens wipe and something like that. And you're all set with that one. All right, so on to some skins and cages. So these are little body accessories that you can get for your friend to help you know personalize the experience of using their camera. So first let's talk cages. Cages are kind of like building a Lego set for your camera body. You start with a body cage so that you can attach a bunch of different accessories to it. So a microphone, a light, sometimes a monitor. So I recommend cages mainly for videography users. And this one takes a little bit of research. Once again, you're gonna have to know the model of your friend's uh, camera that they use. But once you know that, it's very simple. You just go online. The fact, the ones that I recommend are actually from Small Rig. For example, the one I would get is for the Canon R6. So I would type in Canon R6 Small Rig Cage and you'll have a bunch of different options. I recommend a full body cage. However, a half cage is also very popular, especially if you are just gonna be mounting things to one side and not the other side. And then you have sleeves and skins. So I would say that skins and sleeves are a little more of a photographer thing, but of course a videographer can put them on their camera as well. So popular sleeves I've seen are sort of like these rubber silicon ones, and they simply just wrap around the body of the camera and give it a nice uh, aesthetic versus just it's plain black. I like red, I think red looks really nice on these bodies. And then of course you got these skins, which are basically fancy stickers. And those ones are really cool, but they are so meticulous because you have to set them on the camera body perfectly. And there's like a whole process. I think you have to heat them up and like kind of use like uh, tweezers to like pin them down. So it can be a bit of a mission. Just let them know that it's a bit of a process and maybe you can help them build it. That could be a fun little bonding experience. Next up, let's talk monitors. So this will mainly be for videographers. I don't see why a photographer would want a monitor because they're usually using the uh, viewfinder on the camera or the LCD screen. However, as a videographer, those are not quite as reliable, especially if you're getting a lower angle or higher angle shots. And they also aren't the best ways to judge focus on such a tiny screen. So that's why a monitor comes in handy. So you have a few options. There's monitors that can act as recorders, such as the Ninja V, the Ninja V Plus, or the Shinobi. And those ones are really expensive, but really useful. Otherwise, you can just get a monitor that is just useful for those uh, accessory tools like focusing, uh, exposure, and, and once again, just having a bigger screen to look at. And for those, I recommend either Feel World or Small HD. Both of those brands do a really good job when it comes to monitors and you have a bunch of different sizes, I would recommend between five inch and seven inch. All right, now we can talk about some protectors. So you have two options here. You have lens protectors, and then you have what I don't think many people really consider, which is the touchscreen protector. 
So you may see that we do this a lot with our phones and our smartwatches as well. Tempered glass cover protector that you can just apply to the screen that won't mess with the touch capabilities, but will help protect it in the case of falling or some other accident. You can just simply type in a screen protector for the camera model that you're looking for. And there's probably hundreds of options. I bought one that's like a triple pack for my R6. And I've only used the one. I have had no problems. It's been really useful. It doesn't interfere with the color or the look of the touchscreen. And I haven't dropped the camera, knock on wood. But if I do, I, I'm much more comfortable now because it won't damage the screen as badly. All right, now let's talk about some cleaning products you can get for your camera. I'll go through this like a little laundry list because a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory, but as they come up, I'll talk about them. So first up, we have microfiber cloths. So these are extra soft and specific cloths used to clean things such as lenses, uh, mirrors, and touchscreens. So you want to get a bunch of these because it's useful to have. It's nice to have. So if there's a smudge on the lens, you just simply grab the cloth and you wipe it down. I think I got a 13 pack for like 12 bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. So if you can get a big pack like that, they'll be set for a while. Next up, we have a brush. So there's a few brushes you can get. Some come with lens cleaning kits like uh, this microfiber cloth. However, I did get one specifically for a keyboard, but it's good for other accessories like cleaning your uh, earphones, your iPhones and things like that. So I've used it on this phone or this camera rather a few times. Let me show you. It's this one. Uh, I've gotten a bunch of ads for these. They're pretty popular. They're really cheap. I think it was like four bucks, it's just like a, you know, a little brush. I use it on my keyboard, on my laptop a lot. And then you have different ports here to clean different parts. This is like a pen, so you can kind of pick in. But of course you can find other similar tools for uh, cleaning your electronics and just a little practicing a little hygiene that way. Next up, you can actually consider getting a lens cleaning solution. If you did have a, a nasty smudge, whether it be from food, uh, the rain or something, or maybe like it kind of got moldy, although mold may not fix, may not be fixed by microfiber solution. You can use that solution sprayed onto the surface that's, you know, stained. And then with the microfiber cloth, you clean it up and you'll find that you'll have a much easier and cleaner result than if you just use the microfiber by itself. And it's also useful for cleaning your iPhone screens or your laptop screens or iPad screens. So it's just all around useful, even if it's not just for the camera. And last but not least on the topic of cleaning, you can actually buy your friend a sensor cleaning kit. So you actually have to use a specific kit. You're gonna have to look it up. And depending on the body of the camera, you have a few different options. You have full frame, APS-C, or micro four thirds sensors. And it's essentially a little brush that you stroke once to apply the wet solution on, and then you stroke a second time on the dry side to dry that solution. And then you just let the uh, sensor clean up like that. So highly recommend that for just some peace of mind and another way to keep the camera in tip top shape. All right, we're almost there. We're on the last three topics, I promise. And I'll try to make these a little bit quicker because this video is getting a little bit long. Tripods. So you have a few options when it comes to tripods. So number one, you can actually get a tabletop tripod. This is very useful for like vloggers or if you're people who work at their desk and kind of want to get footage that way. There's this one that I would say is really popular, but it's a little bit on the fancy end. And it is called the PGY Tech Man Mantis Pod. There's a second generation of it. This one's really well thought out, has a bunch of bonus features and uh, little trinkets inside the legs that you can use to help, you know, really create good content with it. But it is kind of expensive. I think it's like $90. So there is a non-fancy version, which I would also recommend. And it's called the Manfrotto Pixie Mini Tripod. And this one's significantly shorter. Next up, specifically for videographers, you want to get them a tripod with a fluid head. A fluid head simply means that when you pan tilt or any other movement like that, it's actually gonna be much smoother versus when you're using a ball head, it's a lot harder to achieve smooth movement with that motion. So the fluid head tripod that I use personally is the Geekodo 72 inch tripod. It's more of a like cinema grade and you really wanna make sure that you don't go too cheap on tripods because once again, the payloads get lower and basically you can put your camera on there and then the wind just blows and it will knock it over. But with these uh, tripods, they won't, that will never happen because they have really good sturdy build and the feet are actually rubber. So they kind of stick to the ground a little more. And once again, once you have higher payload, it's not going anywhere from the wind. And then a little accessory you can get for a tripod is actually an L bracket. An L bracket is exactly what it sounds like. It's a bracket that has shaped like an L. It's one side vertical and one side horizontal. The reason you have these is so that you can mount the camera horizontally or you can mount it vertically 
and be able to shoot TikTok and vertical videos really quickly. So this would be mainly for your videographer friends. All right, now let's talk microphones. So we have a lot of different options here and I'll go over my favorite one first, which is the Rode Wireless Go 2s. That's actually what you're listening to right here. I have this little lav accessory for it, which is also uh, on an extra cost on top, but you can just go with the base model, which is just a, a wireless transmitter and a wireless receiver that allows you to capture high quality audio with, from a distance without needing any cables. The two pack goes for about 300, but you can, kinda, can get a single pack, which is what I have with, at $150. And it might even be on sale right now. I think I saw it for less than that. Next up, you can get some on-camera mics. So I do have a Scratch Audio that I record using the Rode VideoMic Go 2. Not to be mistaken with the wireless Go 2. But these ones go on top of the camera body and are really good mostly for vlogging style content, such as this, where I'm not too far from the camera. And going back to getting clean audio, you can also choose to get a lav mic, which is kind of the accessory I'm using here. This one specifically works with the wireless go to, but you can get some that attach to either your phone or the camera body. And then all you need is just a really long cable, or if it's your phone, just a cable long enough to go to your pocket. The one I used for a very long time before this one was the purple Panda. And that one's like maybe 20, 30 bucks. And you just need to buy a MiFi a certified adapter if you're using an iPhone and you can connect that to your phone. I use the voice memo app all the time and it works great. So definitely something to consider if you want to help them capture really clean audio. All right, and last note actually, if your friend already has the Rode Go Wireless 2s, you can get them a charging case. Uh, Rode doesn't make them, there's plenty of third-party ones. I'll link the one right that I have right here on screen. All right, we finally made it to the last topic I wrote down for this, which is actually lights. Lights can get really expensive, so I won't make too many recommendations here but let's start with an on-camera light. The Luma Cube on-camera light. This one goes on top of your camera or if you have a cage on top of the cage and it's just really useful for vlog style or if you're doing night shoots where you're pretty close to your subject, relatively speaking, it'll do a really good job illuminating just right in front of the camera, which is the pretty much the most important spot. Now I'm gonna talk about something that is, I don't know if this will be a gift you'll get, but it's for professional lighting and that's actually the Aperture 120D Mark II. So this is pretty much the YouTuber standard when it comes to professional light systems. The 120D Mark II comes in at like $800 though, so it is very expensive. And if you do get it, you're definitely gonna want to get the light dome or the soft box for it, which is also another $200. So in total, this kit ends up being $1,000, which is a very expensive gift, but one that would be very appreciated by your friend. However, I do have a cheaper alternative for you. The Godox 60LW is a very popular uh, third-party brand that does a very good job and pretty much mimics the 120D Mark II. And at just $160, you can get that with the Aperture Light Dome or a third-party Light Dome and pretty much get the same exact look for around $300 or less. Oh, but one thing I always forget, when it comes to lights, they don't come with stands, so you're gonna have to buy a stand. And if you're using these professional level ones, even the Godox, I would re recommend something like a C stand, or you can get a, a light stand from Amazon, but try not to get the two flimsy ones. And then if you're really worried about knocking it over, just get some sandbags. Um, they should come in some of these kits that I'm gonna include in the description down below. On the final note of lighting, I want to recommend that you get your friend, this goes for photographers and videographers, a five-in-one reflector dish. So these five-in-one reflectors come with a bunch of different sides. There's a white side to add light, a black side to remove light, a diffusion panel so you can actually soften the light. So you don't need a soft box. You just use this diffusion panel and just hold it in front of the light, which is something I'm kind of doing right now, but with a different way. And then you have the silver side to actually bounce a bunch of light and then a gold side to bounce light as well, but with an orange hue. These are very useful for shooting outdoors. So it could be good for your friend if they do a lot of outdoor content. It does require an extra hand or an extra stand to be useful. All right, I think I finally made it. I'm so sorry, I did not expect this video to be as long as it was, but hopefully this gave you a bunch of different ideas of gifts that you can give to your photographer friends 
or for your video production friends. If you do choose to get any of these gifts, please leave a comment down below letting me know which one you are thinking of getting. And if you do use the links that I put in the description, I really appreciate it. These are affiliate links, so I do get a small kickback at no extra cost to you. I hope you guys have a great holiday season. I'll be back next week for Christmas. One more little wrap up video before the end of the year. So if you're looking forward to more filmmaking tips videos like this one, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next week. Ciao.